Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video we're going to be talking about the switch statement. Now the way that I'm going to teach you guys the switch statement is essentially comparing what we've written in the previous video which is this kind of function that essentially uses some ifs, some else ifs, and some elses or at least it did in the previous video to perform the example of allowing us to type in some color and changing the text of you know I don't know say some element on the screen to be that color. So what we're going to do is do this now with a switch statement so you guys can see a little bit of the difference on how it works and hopefully understand it a bit better. So what I'm going to do is scrap all of this code where essentially we had three if statements. I'm going to switch this to a switch. Now, the way that a switch statement works is you start by typing the word switch. You put brackets. Inside the brackets, you put an expression or a variable that you're going to be checking. So in this case, text is what we're going to check, right? We're going to see if it's equal to different values. So we're going to put that variable here. Next, we're going to put our curly braces like this. We're going to type the word case space colon. Then we're going to tab indent and hit break and put a semicolon. Now, I know this is like some of you guys are like, whoa, 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 what all, what is all of this? What's, what's happening? I'm going to go through it, but just bear with me for a second here. So case, what does this mean? Well, essentially inside of a switch statement, we have cases. Now the cases are kind of all of the different things that could happen that the different branches, the different routes we could go on. So in this instance, we have text and our first case is going to be if text is equal to red. Now this is case one. And what this is saying is essentially case red, which means text is equal to red. So if text is equal to red, we're going to do whatever is after this colon and before this break statement. So in this case, we could change the document. So actually, we'll just steal what we have here and I'll change this a bit. So document dot get element by ID dot style dot color equals red like that. And we'll have to change this to header. So what this is going to do now is essentially say, OK, the switch, our first case is if it's red, if it's red, we will change the document to be uh, or we'll change the element to be the color red and then we can break. And that's what this case does. So let's actually refresh to see if this works. So if I type red, you can see that it changes to red. And, you know, if I type something else, if I type blue, obviously we see nothing else is happening. All right. So what's the next thing that we need to do? Well, we need to create some more cases. So what's another case that could happen here? Well, we could have a case that our text is blue, right? That's what it equals to. So we'll break, we'll copy this. And then what we'll do is we'll simply put in here and we'll change the color to be blue. And I think you guys are kind of getting the hang of how this works. Essentially, the switch statement will check these different cases. It will check them in order. If, you know, this text is equal to one of these cases, then the case will run. And then we'll break out of the switch statement and we won't bother looking at any of the other cases that are there. Now, there's some more to talk about, but let's try this for now. So here we have red, we have blue. So let's try blue. We can see that changes to blue. Let's try red. We can see that changes to red. Awesome. So let's add one more case. And I guess we will do green as our last case to stay consistent with our previous example. So we have green like that. Change our color to green. And one last test here to make sure everything's working. Let's go green and it changes to green. Awesome. Now, what I'm going to show you guys is called default. Now, what is default? Well, default is kind of like the else inside of a switch statement. So here, what we can actually do is create what's called a default case, which essentially means that if none of the cases above this ran, then we'll always default and do this default. Now, what the default is going to be is just changing our text color to be black because that is what we need it to be. So we'll change it to be black and there we go. What we've essentially done is simulated, you know, an if else, if and else using a switch statement. Now, these are useful sometimes because it's a lot easier to actually read your code when you put it in a switch statement rather than having them all in that branching if and else statements. But in some instances, you know, you need to use the if else if you're not going to just be checking one variable whenever you do a condition. But for us, since all we're doing is checking one variable, this variable can be equal to a few different things. So we'll check if it's equal to these different things in these cases and then do whatever it is after this. So anyways, let's have a look at this now. Let's refresh this. Let's type hello. We can see the text doesn't change. Let's go green. Oops, if I could get in here. Green, it changes to green. If I type nothing and I click click, it'll go back to black. So that is how the switch statement works. And that is, you know, a good example of when we would use a switch statement. Now, what I'm going to show you next, because we actually have quite a bit of time left in this video, 
is a different example of when maybe you wouldn't you would not want to use a switch statement and that's what i'm going to use uh, an if else statement for but let's just do an example here so i'm going to delete all of this and what i'm actually going to do is change this text input example to be rather than changing the color of this header tag i'm going to ask the user to type in their name and essentially if they type in or sorry not their name, their age. And if their age is greater than a certain number, I'm going to tell them that, you know, they're an adult or they're not an adult. It's a good example that I like to use. So in this case, I'll say, what is your age? Just a little header before our input box. They can type it in here. When they click clicked, we'll run this press function and we can see what their age is. So what I'm going to actually do is make another text input here. So I'm just going to say P slash P. I'm just going to say ID equals um, output. And what I'm going to do is say var hmm. actually do i want to do this yeah sure let's say var output equals document dot get element by id and here i'm going to call this output and what this is going to allow me to do is actually change the output tag here by just referencing the variable output rather than typing this entire thing whenever i want to change it so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put an if statement and remember that this function is going to run whenever this user clicks the click button. So in this instance, we're going to grab the text, which should hopefully be the user's, um, what do you call it? Age. And what I'm going to do is try to convert that age into a number so that I can compare it against another number. Now you'll see how that works. So what I'm going to do in here is I'm actually going to try to convert whatever it is the user types in into a number. Now, the reason I need to do that is because whenever the user types something in a text input box, so like a text field, it's assumed that the data type that comes in is a string. So we know what a string looks like and the strings have those quotation marks. And we remember from previously, and actually I'll do it down here. If I compare something with quotation marks to something, say like that, so 42 like that, and I use my uh, three equal signs, we're going to get the false value for that, right? And I'd like to be able to use the greater than sign and the less than sign between these different values so I can compare whatever the user types in to whatever number I'm going to compare it to. So in this case, 18 to see if they're an adult. So to do that, I need to convert this to a number. So to do that, I'm actually going to use a function called parse int. What this is going to do is simply take the integer value of whatever string we typed in and just return that to us, just give that to us. So this will say var text equals the number of whatever string we typed in, and this will convert that to a number. Okay, so what I'm going to do is compare the text to some number. In this case, I'm going to say 18. So if text is greater than or equal to 18, so if their age is greater than or equal to 18, what I'm going to do is change this output text to say you are an adult. So to do that, I'm going to say output, which is the variable here that's holding a reference to this P tag. So this um, paragraph tag, I'm going to say dot inner HTML equals. And in this case, you are older than 18 exclamation point. Next, what I'm going to do is essentially say if this is not true. We'll change this output text to say you are not older than 18. And let's run this and see if this works. So refresh, what is your age? Let's say 18, click, you are older than 18. What if I say 17, you get, you are not older than 18. Now notice that this one is kind of misleading. It says you are older than 18, but you could actually be 18. So what we should do is change this so that we have one that says if you're 18, right? So let's say else if text equals equals 18, then what we'll do is, and I got to get rid of that actually and add one here, uh, is we'll just simply add this output text and we'll say you are 18 like that. Then we can change this to say greater than 18. And now what we're going to do is check if it's greater than 18. If they are, we'll say you're older. Otherwise, if they are 18, we'll say you're 18. And then finally, else you are not older than 18. So let's run this refresh. Let's go 17. You are not older than 18. Let's go 18. You are 18. And then 19, you are older than 18. And that is how you use this. Now, the reason you wouldn't use a switch statement for this is because we're checking any values that are greater than 18. We're going to print out and say, well, you're older than 18. But if we use a switch statement, we need to check if it's exactly that value, right? We need to have, you know, the text up top and then we need to check 18, 19, 20, 21. It doesn't make sense to use a switch statement in that instance. Whereas before when we were just typing, you know, red, green, blue, that's totally fine. And it makes sense to use a switch statement. But here, since we're checking values, we need to use if else, if else. So anyways, that has been switch statements and as well as a kind of a little bit of a more advanced example. 
with if, elif, and else. If you guys are looking to challenge yourself, I will mention to you that you can actually put if statements and whole chaining blocks inside of other if statements and other chaining blocks. So you can kind of go and nest a bunch of statements together. So you guys can try to do something like that. Um, and you know, that's good practice. Actually, if you want to create something like a choose your own adventure game, you can use what I've just showed you to actually do something similar to that. So anyways, that has been it for this video. If you guys enjoyed, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you guys in another video.